This weekend on the original Rochester Press Box. I'm Tariq Spence from WDKX Wake Up Club. Coming up, I'll tell you about the dark night and why he's a needle mover in Gotham. I'm Kim Burnson from Mornings on WCMF, and I'm going to tell you why Bills head coach Rex Ryan might be talking a little too much. And I'm Mike Catalana. I'll tell you why I'm rooting for the great Derek Jeter to fail. I'm Bill Pucko, How Not to Tank by the Boston Celtics. Join us this weekend on the original Rochester Press Box. Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining us in the original Rochester Press Box. I'm Bill Pucko, joined this week by Kim Burnson, who is from WCMF in the break room in the morning. Thanks for joining us. Good How's to have you back, Kim. I'm glad to be back. It's fun. And also the, uh, the Vision High School Sports Beat. Yep. Contributions there. Mike Catalan, co-anchoring with me here. From yeah. <laughs> Good to be back. Channel 13. And Tariq Spence joins us from our, our friends at WDKX. Thanks for having me. Kimmy, it occurs to me that uh -huh. uh, at this point in time in Rochester sports television, you correct me, if, or even media, you correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, is you are now the highest profile female doing sports in Rochester. I am? Yeah, I, I mean, as, as amazing okay. as that sounds. <laughs> and, and what I wanted to ask you is like, uh, well, first of all, how does that feel? And second, like, how come do you think the females are playing such a smaller role in sports media these days. Are you implying that it's, it's becoming smaller or it's just it's been small for a long time? I, I think it's been small since Tracy Bush left town. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it has been uh, there's only been a few full time, you know, Robin. There's no win. writers and, and Robin went in unwillingly. Right. There are no writers on either of the two daily papers. Mm -hmm. There's nobody doing television. Uh, you're doing, you know, radio and doing a great mm -hmm. job. I heard you on the unoriginal Rochester Press Box. <laughs> Did a great job as a guest there. But how is that working out for you? Um, you know, I find, and I don't know if it's it's just Rochester or in uh, you know nationally, I don't think people have a very high expectation for women who um, who do sports. And I think that um, you know you don't see a lot of women doing, especially like play-by-play -play, things like that, because there hasn't really been a very well-known personality for younger girls to look up to. Maybe Doris Burke. Um, that off the top of my head, that's really the only person I can think of that has that very reputable um, personality and, and reputation. Um, but you see a lot of girls growing up now wanting to be sideline reporters because, you know, those are the, the kind of almost like the glorified um, positions for a woman. Um, why we haven't seen it grow more? I think because men don't want to listen to women really about their opinions about sports so much. And maybe that's changing, but. I don't really see it so much even with my generation. I think guys want to hear the, the hard takes from other men. Your generation. It, 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 is, it is tough to break through and it, it's tough to really break through anything new where you're hearing a voice or maybe hearing an opinion you've never heard before. Um, I, I will say this though, I, I feel bad because there are sometimes even in sports and in baseball, uh, you, you'll have this where uh, the long time with Susan Wallman sort of makes, gets made fun of yeah, more than yes been taking seriously, example. even though her colleagues have said some crazy and delusional things about the Yankees. Um, you, you do have your Pam Olivers, you do have your Aaron Andrews. I, I don't know why. I think it'll change quickly in basketball. I think basketball seems to be the one sport. We'll see if the NCAA will do this for other broadcasts. But I, I think that's the only sport right now where I feel as if a, you know, um, a Cheryl Miller says, says something on a broadcast. They'll definitely take her opinion more seriously, but it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. Now you're like in a management position. You were the, you were you know obviously at the top of your right. game when Tracy left the business. Yeah. Why did that happen? Well, I, I think that was as many much for her own personal reasons. She wanted to change to do something else. But you know when we hired Tracy, I never had a mandate from anybody management wise, and I've worked for a bunch of different companies, even at Channel 13. Uh, nobody said hire a woman. We need this in the position. Tracy was local. She had worked at Time Warner before that. Fairport, Syracuse, she was known and liked. She came right in. She did a great job for us. I will say I've had many job openings during that period of time. The percentage of resume tapes I get from women is, is a pretty small amount. Smaller than it had been? Uh, no, it's stayed pretty consistent. Again, the tapes that I am getting right now. Now, I will say this. When you watch ESPN, there are a lot of women on ESPN anchoring, 
uh, reporting. I mean, you go in the field in the NFL, there are a lot of women. So there are opportunities there. But if I'm a young woman in Kim's age and I'm looking around this business, that's what I'm pointing towards. And it's true even of the young guys, too. I mean, they're, they're not looking. We looked at local stations. We did growing up, right? That's what, where you went and maybe eventually made it to the network. But in terms of working in this market and this type of thing, honestly, there's only a few. Now, it's interesting because in some of our small stations, Binghamton, Elmira, places that I came from and other people came from, there are a few women working down there now that I've kind of kept in touch with. I'm maybe helping them with their resume tapes and working their way towards it. And they're working hard. They're the type of people that could eventually end up in this market and then move their way up. But it's, it, it takes a mindset, too, of saying, yeah, I want to be a local sports anchor in Rochester, New York, too. And the, and the numbers are pretty small. But just to punch away at it then and to finish it off, how's it working out for you? You, you enjoy where you are and what you're doing? Oh, yeah. I mean, I love it. I think you have to have a love for sports to, to be in this um, industry. Yes. It's a highly competitive field. Let's not, let's, yeah. I mean, there are oh, men yeah. that are told no, too. Oh, yeah. That, no that no doubt about it. I mean, this is a really yes. high demand field. Um, and, and the fact that people are still trying to break into it makes it hard. So it's not as easy as, okay, yeah, of course, we've got plenty of positions for sports. Right. You, you definitely have to be good at it, and you have to break through those barriers. The Aaron Hernandez verdict when the original Rochester Press Box continues. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box. The Aaron Hernandez verdict came down, and it certainly appears though Tariq is going to spend the rest of his life in prison as a result. Do we take anything from what occurred there? Uh, the only thing you can take is a, a cautionary tale of, you know, when you've given this opportunity to go to college, to play at a university, to get to the NFL, where the less than 1% of 1% of athletes get to do it, you've got to change your mindset. And he never changed his mindset. He was doing the same things, hanging around the wrong crowd, living a lifestyle he had long passed. And people probably he grew up with were, uh, were proud of him. Um, you know, he'll go peel. He'll go through all of these different things. But I, I feel bad for Aaron Hernandez because he was given an opportunity of education. He was given an opportunity to play a sport. He was given an opportunity to make more money than maybe he thought he could ever make in his life. And it is all gone. And there is a child that will be without a father. And they were, you know, the Patriots moved on. You went to the Patriots, the ultimate team in which guys who have questionable character come in and excel in the system. And unfortunately, he was not able to leave that lifestyle that he left. And I feel really bad. And there are more Aaron Hernandez's out here. But they find a way to get away from all of the negativity they grew up around and change their stars. I felt a less a lot less bad for Aaron Hernandez when I when I heard the the mother of the victim speak in court, mm. however. It was yeah. one yeah. of those things. I think the biggest place you're gonna see a change is the way the teams are and how proactive they are in to lack of a better word, investigating their own players. The Patriots were conveniently naive about some of the things that Aaron Hernandez was doing. Either they didn't know or they didn't want to know. But I think it's beholden to a team. They, they have to figure this out. They hear a hint of anything. They have to start looking into it. Maybe at a point where you can get a guy to change. Maybe you can get a guy. Or they just cut their ties with him. Because 
they acted, I mean, they just gave him a $40 million contract, what, a year before? And there were whispers about him, but no one knew to the extent of things that he was doing. Yeah. So do you think then they're going to look into it more because of the Aaron Hernandez thing? Or I think it was more the domestic violence thing that's really sparked teams' interest in their players' personal lives. I think it's all of it. Yeah. I think yeah, it's that. I, it's I think kind it's of a Winston coming in with the question marks about him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Johnny Manziel just got out of rehab. I think if you're going to sign over a check to a young person, you've got to know them, vet the whole process all the way through. How can I know you're going to be there on Sunday if you can't make a conscious decision Monday through Saturday? This person will still get drafted, though. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Now, there are going to be cases where, I mean, they are doing some serious background checks Absolutely. on some of these players. You put players. somebody on Winston's plane, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> and again, and you look at Winston, you know, he had the, the, the sexual assault allegation and then a series of other things. He's already on everybody's radar for that. I think with a guy like Hernandez, maybe there were some things, but I really do believe teams took a blind eye to it and figured what we don't know, we don't have to deal with. And I think that's where it has changed because it's a ton of money. They can put provisions in contracts and then try to get out of them. But this was just a way over the top, horrific situation. And, and Aaron mm -hmm. Hernandez is, is in control of Aaron Hernandez. Right. There's no one else that could have been a part of this. There's no conspiracy theory. And that's the sad part about it is that he did it to himself. Yeah, you can only you know, blame other people for the, uh, your own actions yeah. to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, when we return. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box. Like it or not, Michael, the, the Ted Nolan experience in Buffalo. Well, it, it, it was going to end this way. I mean, Ted Nolan, Tim Murray inherited him. Tim Murray's going to want his own guy in there. I kept saying Ted Nolan did not get fired because the team finished 30th back-to-back -back seasons. He, he was somewhat set up to fail, but it was almost if Murray was just saying, I'm getting my whole team. You coach it. I'm getting my whole plan together, and we're going to start moving forward. And I believe... We'll hit that place as this, you know, lottery happens and we see what happens going forward. It is all about going forward. Murray wants his own guy to be coaching all these young players, setting the tone for the organization. I thought Ted Nolan had nearly a 0% chance yeah. of staying in Buffalo. I guess if somehow he would have had him in the playoffs or on the edge of the playoffs, he might still have gotten fired. I, and I don't feel badly for Ted. I know some people are saying that he got to come back in the league. He got paid for it. His reputation is way up amongst is a it? lot of people. Oh, I absolutely believe so. Around the league, people know that was a terrible team in terms of talent level. He kept stayed positive the whole time. You don't hear any negatives. I think Ted becomes that guy. And the NHL fires coaches like that. Then when somebody's looking for a boost midseason, veteran guy to come in, maybe he's got some X's and O guys on the bench, that Ted Nolan can become that guy again and coach again. I don't feel badly for him, but I to and I totally understand why Murray did what he did. It may not work, but I don't see hmm. Ted Nolan as the guy with Connor McDavid or Jack Eichel and Sam Reinhart and everybody going forward. Hmm. I feel bad for him. I really do. I think we all knew they were going to tank. Uh, some of the fans knew they were going to tank. And it, it set them up for a fall. And, you know, will the NHL come back somehow around, give him a job someplace else? Maybe. But, you know, the, the, the Sabres were not going to give it all that they could this year. And he, this is the bad side of tanking. You know, people are just like, oh, sure, you know, the, I'm loyal to the company. I'm loyal to the team. They'll take care of me. They know it's going to be a down year. They weren't loyal to him. They weren't going to right. be loyal but to him. But here's the difference. We, we, I compare it all the time, the Sixers and the Sabres, tanking teams, organizations. Brett Brown was hired by Sam Henke as his guy. They've lost a ton of games in two years. It is his guy and his guy going forward. Brett Brown doesn't have to worry about losing his job. Ted Nolan was inherited. And yeah. Ted Nolan is not the guy most teams are going to start with, young team, build their way up for a long period of time. Again, Ted's reputation was never fantastic. It's always been better in Buffalo than it's been everywhere else. I think he enhanced his reputation as a coach for those few years, losing or not, and I think he will get another head coaching job down the line. Kimmy, like it or not, uh, the New York Yankees are, you know, 
I- ignoring the milestone marks for, for A-Rod. Like that or not? Listen, the Yankees can ignore <laughs> it all they want, but it's going to be there. And it's, it's a cloud that kind of lingers over their stadium. But what I can't figure out for the life of me is Yank- the way Yankees fans feel about A-Rod. Because I believe it was the beginning of this, uh, the season opener, and you hear this big roar of applause when A-Rod steps up to the plate. How long ago was it when they were booing A-Rod for even being there? You know, so the A-Rod thing, I, I just, it baffles me. I understand what the organization's trying to do. They're just trying to sweep it under the rug, and they want him out of there. They just want him gone. They want to wash their hands of A-Rod. But the Yankees fans are what really confuse me. They, Don't you I, think that reaction makes them look even worse? Yeah. I, 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 I think you know, the funniest thing about this is that I'm actually angry at the Yankees. He's still on your team. You're still going to pay him. Mm-hmm. So embrace him. The, the Yankee fans, what else do you have to cheer for? Tanaka's out. He's not, play, he's not playing very well. Jeter's retired. They have nothing to cheer for but A-Rod. Yeah, I, I would rather see. You know, sometimes it's okay to be a little indifferent. And I know A-Rod's like the last person anybody's going to be indifferent. But like when Ryan Braun came back to the Brewers, Cheers. he gets a standing ovation. I mean, I don't mean you got to boo him for every step he takes to the plate, but does he deserve a standing ovation? I'm with Kim. When I saw that with A-Rod, I was like, I was, I, I is it didn't because see it coming. they lack any sort of star power yes. on that team? This is, the, this is all they have. <laughs> but that doesn't yeah. mean you have to cheer for them. It, right. And really cheer. Have seen the ticket yeah. prices? <laughs> I'd have to cheer for them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in pursuing Willie Mays in the home run race, this is something you can kind of just like, hey, it doesn't exist. It exists. Yeah, you know? but there is a difference between really pumping it up, mm. building it up, you know, A-Rod and selling tickets and all around it and just kind of letting it happen. I think it's just going to happen. Yeah. Unfinished business when we return. It's the Challenger Miracle Field, and it's being built in Webster for our physically and emotionally challenged friends. It'll cost a half a million dollars. Opening day is 2016. You can help make it happen. Check it out, WebsterMiracleField.org. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box, Unfinished Business. Kim. I was a huge, huge fan of the Rex Ryan hiring in Buffalo, and I still am, don't get me wrong. But Bills fans are finally seeing... Rex B. Rex full force. Uh, in an article this week published by Sports Illustrated's uh, Monday Morning Quarterback, Rex Ryan kind of came out and took some shots at his former team. Now, uh, Jets tight end uh, Jace Amaro came out and kind of said that Rex didn't hold the 2014 Jets um, accountable. Well, Rex had some things to say that I can't repeat um, back to uh, Amaro, but um, my point is, is Rex just kind of setting himself up again for to, to, to be like the laughing stock of coaches? Now, again, I'm all for Rex being Rex, but at some point, let's leave the past in the past and start focusing on your team now. And I, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be a continued thing. I'm sure it will be. But can we maybe focus your um, trash talking elsewhere? Am I wrong in that? No, if he succeeds, I think he's brash. If he's wrong, he's a blowhard. And he's not leaving himself much middle ground. And I think it stays in large part because it's the Jets, too, mm-hmm. in the division twice a year. That's going to keep it going a little bit longer, yeah. too. Tariq, keep it in New York. Uh, I will. And uh, an exciting thing happened on Tuesday. He got the win, and it might not have been pretty against the Phillies, but it was still a great thing to see. The Mets have something called Matt Harvey, and this is a guy – number 33 on your program, that the Mets fans have been waiting for for a long time. He is what's called a needle mover. He takes regular fans of baseball, maybe even from the Bronx, to go find out how good this guy really is. How good is he going to be? I don't know. But what he's brought is a lot of excitement and a lot of fans to the seats on a Tuesday night when it's really too cold. Wait till things start heating up in the summer. Now, for the Mets, I'm not quite sure how well they're going to do. David Wright has a hamstring injury. But we're not really worried about this season. It's all building for next year. Harvey's not even going to pitch nine innings. He's probably going to go six or seven. But it's the excitement. It's the buzz. It's the name. It's not a Yankee. It's a Met. And it's been about two decades since a Met has been the focus of a team in New York. Matt Harvey's that guy. The Dark Knight is in (laughs) Gotham. You know, it was next year last year, too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) True, true, true. Leave him alone. He can't talk about the Knicks anymore. (laughs) One day at a time. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't like the Players' Tribune. I don't like this Derek Jeter thing that he has set up. And here's the main reason why I don't like it. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's Derek Jeter's setup of an organization and a website that allows the players to speak unfiltered to the public. In, otherwise, it, in other words, it's more than 140 characters on Twitter. And we've seen how well it works out to have the players unfiltered sometimes talk to the public. The problem I have with it is when it ends up coming out, what it is is an interview done by a producer and a writer with a player, and then that article is written by that producer or writer who does not get a byline, and it's attributed to the player. In other words, as I saw mentioned on Fox Sports 1 this week, it's a press release. It's basically what it is. It's guys like, you know, I don't know, Big Poppy, who tells the whole world how he's been wronged by baseball, and there is no issue with him of performance-enhancing drugs. And maybe that's true, but in a real article, you could have all of David Ortiz's comments and maybe the other side of it. Look, Derek Jeter thinks this is going to work, and maybe for him it will because everything seems to work out. But in the end, it's kind of funny to me to see a guy who survived 20 years in New York City with arguably more positive press than any athlete in our lifetime is the guy who's worried about players not getting a fair shake from the media. I don't think this really is a single voice from the players. I think it's as much a PR machine, and I think in the long run it'll work out as well as the player's lounge restaurant he's trying to set up in Tampa. <laughs> Hey, Ted Nolan succeeded at it. How not to tank by the Boston Celtics? Coach Brad Stevens was given a perfect hand by Danny Ainge. Traded away all his stars, gave him a team he couldn't win with. In midseason, he traded away the two best players he had and left him with a team that could not possibly qualify for the NBA playoffs and the lottery pick that comes with it. So the Celtics finished up their season by winning five games in a row to qualify for not the eighth, but the seventh position in the NBA playoffs where they get to face the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, I don't know whether to be disgusted with what the Boston Celtics, a team that I grew up rooting for, disgusted with the Boston Celtics, what they did this year, or to be proud of them. But I think what has to be said is you have to certainly respect the effort that they put in this year. That is our program. Kim, thank you very much. Nice return. We'll have you Thanks back. Thanks for having me. Michael, good thank job. Thank you. Tariq, good to have you. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on the original Rochester Press Box.